Hello, I'm Carolyn and I'm going to make a series of three videos showing how you can use interpolate subpaths in Inkscape to create rhinestone designs. In the first video, I'm going to go through the basic steps and give a few examples of how you can use them. In the second video, I'll show how you can create designs with multiple rows and even using different size rhinestones. And in the third video, I'll show how you create designs that need a little bit of manual input. For the first example, I've just drawn a zigzag line using the Bezier tool. You can also use the pencil. The main thing you have to remember when using the pencil or the Bezier tool is mode must be on the first option, create regular Bezier path. After the line is drawn, which is going to be my path, I need to copy it to the clipboard. So I'm just going to copy it. Now I need to create the rhinestones. So I'm just going to draw a circle. Then I'm going to go path, object to path, and resize it. I might make mine 3.5 because I want it to be bigger than the rhinestone, but the size you use will depend on your project. I've now got one circle and I need another one. So I'm just going to duplicate it. I'll just show I've got two but I'm going to leave them sitting one on top of the other. I know one of them is selected and I need them both. So I'll just drag the mouse around so that both are selected. Then I'll go path, combine. Then I'll go path, path effect editor. And I have some more options. In apply new effect, I'm going to enter interpolate subpaths. And I'm just going to click on add. Now I want these circles to be pasted on this path and as I copied it to the clipboard earlier on I just need to click on this little icon here with the clipboard and the circles are now on the same path as the zigzag line. I can see I've got five circles obviously you need a lot more for this to look like a rhinestone design. So I just start increasing the number. I might actually just type a number in. I might try 50. Then add a few more. I'm going to stop at 61 because I like the look of that design. I also like using this method for rhinestone designs because the number of steps indicates the number of rhinestones I'm going to need for my project. Also, these circles are not distorted when you apply them to the path. So I know when I cut these out, each one of them will be the same size as the original circle I started with. When you're finished creating your design, go path, object to path. You must do that before you do any further steps. I'll just show what happens if you don't. So for example, I went path union, it returns to the original two circles. But if you go path, object to path, then if you go path union, your design stays the same. What I actually like to do is cut this out as a stencil. So I draw a rectangle. I'll just change the color. I'm just going to send it to the back. Select both parts, go path, difference. Just make it darker. So this will be my stencil material and these circles will cut out individually. I prefer this method because the rhinestones then drop neatly into each hole. So there we have it, a finished rhinestone design ready for cutting out. For the final project in this video, I'm just going to draw a circle. Go path, object to path, then I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. Then I'm going to draw the smaller circle for the rhinestones. So I'm just going to draw a circle. Go path, object to path, then resize it. I'll make this 3.5 again. Then I will duplicate it. So I know there's two there, so I'm just going to drag the mass around 
the circle so that both are selected. Go Path, Combine. And Path Effect Editor, Interpolate Subpaths is already selected. So I'll just click on Add, then I'll click on the clipboard. You may notice here, it looks like I've only got four circles and it does state five steps. One of those is actually underneath the others. So let's just start increasing the steps. I'm happy with the look of that. I know I've got 34 steps, so I'll need 34 rhinestones. To finalize it, I'll go path, object to path. Then if I wanted to use it as a stencil again, just gonna draw a square, place it behind, change the color so I can see what I'm doing. And select both parts, go path, difference. So if you haven't tried interpolate subpaths when creating rhinestone designs, you might like to give it a try. For more complicated designs, please watch the next videos because the steps are slightly different. If you'd like even more ideas on creating designs for your cutter, please visit my blog at cuttingtime.blogspot.com. Thank you.